We're still working in Chapter 1, the review exercises. These are problems from 1.6, and this is Part 1, Simplify. So number 1, negative 5 squared, what does that mean? You could think of that as the opposite of 5 squared or negative 1, because it means the same thing as the opposite. 5 squared is 5 times 5. The base, remember, is 5, because the negative sign is not in a parentheses, so you're only scaring the 5. So this would be negative 25. That's number one. Let's go to number two. This one is different. We have a negative seven in parentheses squared. Now the reason there's a parentheses around it, this is to signify that the base is negative seven. So we're squaring negative seven. So it's negative seven times negative seven and a negative times a negative is positive, so this gives us positive 49. Okay, let's go to number three. This is similar to number two, except you've got it raised to the third power. You're cubing something. So again, the base is negative four, so we have negative four times negative four times negative four. So the answer is negative, and 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So the answer is negative 64. Notice the difference between number 2, the answer was positive, because you were doing only two negatives times each other, but in number 3, you're doing three negatives times each other, and the answer then was negative. Let's go to number 4. Negative two to the fourth power. This is similar to number one. The base is only two, not negative two, because the negative sign is out in front. So you could think of that as negative one times two to the fourth, which means two times two times two times two, if you want to write that out. So we're going to get a negative. Now, two times two is four, times another four will give you 16. So this is negative 16 for number four. All right, let's go on to number five. Negative one to the fourteenth power. And again, the negative out in front is not to the fourteenth power. So we have negative one times, well one to any power is one, because you're multiplying one times itself a bunch of times. So remember, 1 to the 14th equals 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. You have to do that 14 times. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You really wouldn't want to have to write all that out, right? But that's going to give you an answer of 1 when you multiply 1 times itself over and over again. So basically we have negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 for the answer. All right, number six, we have a negative one in the parentheses. And we are raising that to the 23rd power. So now we have to think about what this is going to be. I'm going to take a negative one and multiply it times itself 23 times. So I'm going to have 23 negative signs. Well, if you have an odd number of negatives, the answer is negative. And again, you're multiplying one times itself 23 times. It doesn't matter how many times you multiply one times one times one, the answer is one. So this answer also happens to be negative one for a very different reason than number five. All right, number seven, negative six cubed. All right, here we are again. The base is six. Right, so this minus sign just goes out in front as a negative one times six times six times six. So again, we have a negative one negative sign. This is just like number four, just like number five. The answer, did you notice when the minus not, sign's not in the parentheses, the answer ends up being negative because you always have a negative one times some positive number. All right, six times six times six is two sixteen. All right, let's do number eight. 
Whoops. We've got negative 1 in parentheses to the 42nd power. All right, have to analyze this because we certainly don't want to write the negative 1 out 42 times in a row. So imagine what would it would look like if you had negative 1 times negative 1 and you wrote out 42 of those negative 1s, you're going to have 42 negative signs. Well, that's an even number of negative signs multiplied by each other, so the answer is going to be positive. And then 1 to the 42nd power then is just 1 because, again, 1 times itself over and over is 1. So the answer to this is positive 1. All right, let's just look at the difference between number 8 and number 6. All right, for number 6, we had a negative 1 in the parentheses just like number 8, but we had to the 23rd power for number 6, so it was an odd number of negative signs. That's why the answer was negative 1. We have an even number of negative signs. The answer is going to be positive 1. All right. Let's go on to a couple more. Number 9. So we're doing order of operations here. We've got 7 times negative 3 minus 2 cubed plus 4. And order of operations you do inside parentheses first, but it's already simplified inside the parentheses. That's just to put it, show that that's a negative number. And notice you've got the minus signs and the plus signs and so you're not going to do all that last, so I could do this multiplication at the same time I do that exponent, or you could take two steps, do just the exponents first. Another alternative is you can write 2 cubed as 2 times 2 times 2. All right, so if we do 7 times negative 3, it's negative 21, right, minus 2 cubed will be 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, plus 4, so I'm down to just some addition and subtraction, and be careful, we go left to right. So it's actually easier to rewrite this as negative 21 plus a negative 8 plus 4. And it's just addition. So you can go left to right, or you could add any two numbers together first. Let's go ahead and go left to right. So I've got negative 21 plus negative 8, so that's two negatives added together. That's going to be a negative 29 plus 4, and now you're adding a negative and positive number together. There's more negatives, so it's going to be negative, and then you subtract 29 minus 4 because there's 25 more negative signs, basically, than the four positive signs. I like to put it with a red. All right, let's go on to number 10. All right, we have to simplify within parentheses first. So we have 9 minus 5. Now we have to simplify inside these parentheses. I'm going to do that on the side over here. 3 minus 10 is the same thing as 3 plus a negative 10. And now you're adding a positive and a negative, and the negatives outweigh the positives by 7. So it's negative 7. Remember, you take the sign of that one with a higher absolute value, 10 negatives, and then subtract 10 minus 3. So this is negative 7 inside the parentheses. And now we do multiplication next. Do not do the 9 minus 5. So we still just copy the 9, the minus, and let's do what is 5 times negative 7? Negative 35. Now some of you may go directly to 9 plus 35, and that's perfectly okay when you're showing your work because you know when you end up subtracting a negative, you will get a positive. 9 plus 35 is 44. And so that is part one of 1.6.